Ladies, I knew you join us so so far. And fellas, are you enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me, but it's something more than that. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, we just started, baby. We just slow it down a bit. Oh, he wants to slow it down. Slow it down for me. It's close. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> Don't be alone. Just bear with us for just all time. Thank you. Yeah. Put a little hand in the tire, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> hey, Brian. Right. You might have to slow it down. Are you ready? Right. I'm ready. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oops. Daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Straighten it out, baby. Come on. This is what we call Otis's pampering time. Right there. Right here. I'm good, Jay. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, that's all okay. No, man, it was speed. Get away from me. <laughs> How y'all doing? Woo! You know, it's been a few months of Sunday since we've been here to your wonderful city. It's been too long because we love coming up here. You all are simply fantastic. <laughs> you know, we the chips, you know, we've been around for <clears throat> 61 years. And, uh, well. you know, most of us, they would just come out and say, oh, thank you, Big Bob, man. But I'm going to say this to you do you know who the real stars are? We are not us. Well, the reason I put it that way is because when you decide to leave your wonderful conference of your home, sometime come out in, in clinic weather, dealing with this crazy world that we're living in, and these people the way they drive, you know, uh, <laughs> you all are the stars, you know, we just up here having fun because of you, that's why we're around all these years. So give yourself a round of applause. Tell them what I'm thinking of. Come on. All right. He would like for me to tell everyone that I'm 82 years old. something that will possibly outlive us all, you know, I'm going to, to say this. There will never ever be a recording company like Motown. All right! <laughs> now, the reason I said that, you know, I would never sit up here and denigrate uh, any of the heavyweights, you know, like CBS. Warner Brothers. And Ron's got a young son. I remember him when he was a little shorty doo wop. He's a big doo wop now. What, what do uh, Ryan do? Ryan is the president of uh, Warner Chapel Public. Wow. Yeah. 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 I remember when he was out here, now he's taller and bigger than I am now. You know, so, you know, it's great to be part of something that, you know, you can see take on a whole other kind of manifestation. And speaking of Motown, 2648 West Grand Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan. We love you too. Uh, uh, we were being interviewed, and this year one lady came up to me and she was interviewing us and she was talking to me and she said, You know, Otis, we love Motown Sound and the Temptations Coast. Now, check this out. She said, Because even over in Croatia, 
Our, no, Romania. She said, uh, we uh, heard you guys working out. Said, wait, wait, back up train. In Romania? Yeah. He said, oh yeah, y'all, Temptation Motown big over there. Wow. You know, and that made me stop and say, wow, universal Motown is known the world over, wherever we have gone. Uh, no other company would do what Motown uh, was doing. And by that I mean, you see, not only is Motown known for all the hits and the artists that came from there, the songwriters, the producers, they had a division called Artist Development. So I just said, uh, what's Artist Development? It's where we had to go to school. <laughs> yeah, you, you laugh. <laughs> we went, you know, Maurice King, see, Barry had some wonderful thespians, you know. Uh, Maurice King. Our vocal coach, you know, uh, he was grooming us, rather they were grooming. Before I get to that, let me say this. You see all this stuff that we're doing up on stage, all this choreography and making sure. Yeah. Well, we have to give credit to the late, great Paul Williams. Yeah. Well, so after that, we have Paul Mickey, Adrian Williams, playing guitar for us. I mean, uh, Harvey Fuqua and Barry Gordy, they were talking about all the wonderful acts that they have and we need to groom them, cultivate them so they, uh, you know, present themselves in the right way. So Harvey said, well, I know some people are uh, Barry, so Barry said, well, go get them. So uh, now the division that I'm, I'm talking about is called Artist Development. And so when Barry hired these four wonderful guys uh, that was teaching us, the first one was uh, Charlie Atkins. Now, Pops, Boy, you better be on your P's and Q's because this stuff, this stuff wasn't easy to do. You know, you got to move here and, you know, move, move, boy, move your ass. You can't go to Cleveland if you can't move your ass. Oh, you talk to us just like that. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, sir. You know, so when we mastered this stuff, then here come uh, Morris King, our vocal coach. So now Morris King was the vocalizers. I mean, see, when the chimps started singing, we used to start rehearsing with uh, gospel. Swan silver tones, Dixon hummingbirds. Harmonizing for man, please. Chips would blow him off the stage. That's the classic chips. David, David, Paul, Melvin, myself. So uh, you know, so one, one day Maurice, uh, you know, teaching us about singing some close harmonies like the modern airs, the four freshmen, the highlows. See, now those kind of harmonies, you have to stay on your note because if you got off of it. Boy, get your ass back up on the notes. You're making the <laughs> sound like, You know, that's what it means. Yes, Pop, yes, Pop. So he taught us. Then there was another great chord for Lon Fontaine and our keyboards that would make sure we stay uh, in pitch, uh, Johnny Allen. So we rehearsed and we rehearsed. We went, uh, went to New York City. Now, they had been grooming us to go to Las Vegas to play the smart rooms, which we still play. Then there was a club in Cherry Hill, New Jersey called Latin Casino, which was see 2,000 people per show. So we had to do 10 uh, days there, two shows a night. Packed. But here come five brothers from down south, Paul, Eddie, David, Nell, and myself. We played the Copacabana, <laughs> broke every existing record at the Copacabana. <laughs> Tony Bennett, Sammy Davis, you know, the heavyweights played it, but here we come and we packed that place. Oh, I was, I was kind of scared because the police was out there on horses trying to regulate the people. <laughs> the place wasn't that big, but it was standing all outside. So we've had some wonderful times, you know, and uh, uh, I thank God for that. And uh, so, but getting back to um, the teaching of uh, Motown, Maurice King said one day after we had been rehearsing, he said, we were getting ready to run out to go. He said, I, 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 y'all come back here, I got something to talk to you about. He said, Pops, we've been here since early. Then shut up, boy, sit down. <laughs> we sat down. Now, what I'm about to say applies to everybody in this building. I just relegated to the temptation. Pops said, the first thing, you cannot tell anybody what to do or how to do when it comes to their uh, politics. <laughs> Oh, they got quiet on that one, see. <laughs> I know. The second one was, you cannot tell anybody about their religion. 
You're still quiet, okay. <laughs> the third one was, you cannot tell anybody about how or how not to spend their money. Yeah. <laughs> and the fourth one, every group got one. By that I mean, big <laughs> man boy. He said, you cannot tell anybody who they should and should not make love to. Talk about you. Yeah, don't you can't tell anybody who they should and should not make love to. You know, so like I said, we were taught some wonderful, you know, things about being in show business. But the song that we're about to do for you now, we got the green light that we were getting ready to do our 60th anniversary album. So there we are. Thank you. We were riding around the valleys in the freeways. And I said, there, man, it's, I'm happy that we're getting ready to do our 60th anniversary album. It's only right to have uh, Smokey. Oh, so there so, well, she said, well, how do you know Call her. So I called her. <laughs> and for 61 years, Smokey has been calling me Oak. O-A-K. So I said, Smokey, we're getting ready to do our 61st album, 60th anniversary album. Would you please, we'd love for you to produce it. No problem, Oak. I said, oh, not only that, we would love for you to um, write the song as well. You got it, Oak. And I said, we also would love for you to sing with us. Oh, Oak, oh, you ain't got to do nothing but ask. So we did. You know, so we went in and did the song. And... Uh, the guys left. So Smokey and I and the engineer, we're sitting there listening. And I took myself out of being over the swings. I'm listening with an objective ear just to see where we were. So I'm sitting there listening, and Smokey, you know, he had the funny look on his face. So I'm listening, and I'm saying, ooh. You know, sometimes you might make an ugly face when you feel or see something that's good. Good Lord, that's good, that's good. So I'm looking over at Smokey, and Smokey had the damnedest look on his face. I said, Smokey, what, Oak? Why are you looking like that? You trying to get the ladies all hot bottom? That's what I'm doing. Now. That's why we want you to sing this song. You know, so we did a great job, and I think you will enjoy because the song we're about to do for you. You see the young man on the left? Yeah, he starts it off. He sounds so close to Smokey. You know what we call him? Chocolate Smokey. And the name of the song is, is it going to be yes or no? We're touching. Is it silent lovemaking? <laughs> 